I walk around like, nah, this is not right. This is not right. <laughs> six years ago in October, uh, this year, October would be six years, uh, I was diagnosed with colon cancer. Uh, I had the cancer removed. Uh, six year will be my six year anniversary in October, being done with it. And, uh, thank you. I had, I had to lose the weight uh, six years ago. I was about 300, uh, 343 pounds. Holy crap. I was 300, 343 pounds, now I'm at 270, 274, 273 pounds. <laughs> trying to get down, trying to get it out. And I'm telling you something, fellas, we need to be more aware. We do. We need to be more aware of, 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 of our, I know a lot of guys think they Superman. And that's what I like to do. When I do my shows, I like to talk to the fellas and be like, you know what, we need to get our awareness up. Because I'll give you all a real number. Seven out of 10 guys, 70% of guys will die from either prostate, colon, or testicular cancer. That's real, 70% of us. Because we don't have no awareness, we don't say nothing. We keep it in, we Superman, we don't have to say nothing. I know most men will stand in a crooked position because something hurts. That's in <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. You go to work, you see Phil, Phil standing like this. You walk past Phil, you're like, Phil, what's wrong? Nothing, it'll go away, leave me alone. <laughs> and fellas, do we help Phil? No, we don't help Phil. We make fun of Phil the whole night. Every time we see Phil, hey, Phil. <laughs> we need to stop. Phil needs to see a doctor, fellas. We need to be aware. We need to be, we need to get our awareness up like the ladies. Ladies, your awareness is fantastic. Fantastic. If there's something wrong in the female world, you will let everybody know. <laughs> you will stop people. Do you know what today is? But that's good. That's fantastic. You would never let your best friend stand there crooked. Your best friend is crooked. You'd be like, girl, what's wrong with you? What's this? Straighten yourself up, fix yourself up. That's what we need to do, fellas. We need to be like that. Don't go through what I went through. Don't wait till the last minute before you gotta go see your doctor. If it's time to go see your doctor, go see your doctor. Don't go through what I went through, because they did a lot of stuff back here. <laughs> they did, but I'm glad they got it out. I'm glad it, it was done. I'm, after all my surgeries, after everything was done, after all of that, my recovery, I have a new respect for you ladies now. I do. Cause I had to be y'all for a little bit. <laughs> for real, when I was going through my recovery from the, from the surgeries, I was still a little, I was still bleeding in the back side, so I had to wear maxi pads for about two weeks. It's not funny. I didn't even know they had a sticky side. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know how they worked. Mine just moved around every time I walked. I walked around like, nah, -uh, this is not right. This is not right. This is why they always mad. No, I get it now. Uh uh, uh huh. I had to call my sister, but I was like, how do you keep these things still? She was like, did you peel it? I'm like, did I peel what? She was like, that little piece of paper, what did you think that was? I said, I thought it was an air freshener. I don't know how these work. She was like, no, you idiot. You peel it, stick it, then you're good. So I did. And it was fantastic. <laughs> After that, I was like, okay, there it is, there it is. I was giving random ladies high fives. Stay free, yeah. <laughs> Provo, Utah. Where am I? <laughs> When I was coming up here, I punched into my GPS. I was like, Provo, Utah. It came back and said, you sure? <laughs> like, I hope so. But no, I got here, I got here earlier today. Uh, as soon as I got to town, <laughs> I got pulled over. <laughs> yeah, by one of your friendly neighborhood officers who looked at me and the first thing out of his mouth was, I'm not profiling. <laughs> I said, don't worry about it, it's okay. Like, you see, I. I you look at me, most folks look at me and they think I'm some type of mean guy or some type of guy that likes to fight or likes to be a bouncer at clubs. I have been. <laughs> but I don't, I don't like to fight. If you try to approach me in an angrily way, I will hug you. I will hold you. I will kiss your cheek. I will get you out of trying to fight me. I don't want fights. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big guy, but I don't like confrontation. You know, that's why I joined the military. I go overseas now to perform for the troops overseas. I used to be a service member myself. I was eight years in the Marine Corps before. Thank you.
which was uh, which was kind of I was when I when I joined the Marines, like going in with the name Sean Peabody. I mean, I know you look at me like, how is he a Peabody? But actually, my full name is Sean Milo Kamakaniki Ili Aloha Peabody. Yes, if you look at me, I'm not Hispanic. I do not cut yards. I have had somebody stop me and ask me. When I was wearing this shirt earlier, they asked me if I change oil. They said I look like somebody that does oil changes. So I changed their oil. It's good money, I need gas money. But my full name, which a lot of people think, when they see me, they automatically assume that I'm some type of Latino, Hispanic. They start, even Latino folks start speaking Spanish to me, which I don't know how to take that. Because they come up and they're like, hola, como es to be? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like two tacos, and then I'm going home. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm Polynesian. That's my Hawaiian name, I'm, Ho I'm Hawaiian. My Hawaiian name's in the middle, is, which is Kamakani Ki'ili Aloha, which means winds that carry love from one to another. That's what my name means. Yeah, you say, aw. Oh. I had to explain this to my Marine Corps drill instructor. <laughs> that was a very awkward moment. Cause he seen my name, he was like, oh, 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 Peabody, Peabody, come back here. What's all these K's? I was like, oh, sir, that's my Hawaiian name. He said, well, what is it? I said, it's Kamakanakili Aloha. What? How many letters? 18, sir. Then he asked me, he says, what does it mean? I know all these Polynesian names mean something. And I tried for the life of me to come up with something like man will rip off ears if asked too many questions. <laughs> something manly. This is my Marine Corps drill instructor looking at me in the face and I couldn't help it. I just looked him straight in the face and it came out nice and fluffy. <laughs> looked him right in his face. I said, when's that carry love from one to another, sir? And this was back in the Clinton era, so he was like, oh, don't ask, don't tell. Get on the bus, go in. Get on the bus. Uh, I moved up to Boise. I'm originally from uh, the Bay Area, California, is where I was raised. One, one woo. <laughs> is that somebody from the Bay Area? <laughs> I like how I can't find you. You're like, heck, you're like a sniper heckler. <laughs> you're just coming from the middle of the, uh-huh. And I moved up to Boise, Idaho, because uh, one of my friends was like, oh, Sean, you'll love it. Now, I haven't seen Boise until I was actually driving the moving truck there. And you say, oh, how many folks have been to Boise? You know what, coming from the Bay Area of Oakland, Richmond, Vallejo, it was a huge change to be living in Boise. When I got there, not even, none of my neighbors even looked like me. They looked like y'all. <laughs> You know, my neighbors in the front row. <laughs> nice. But when I got there, they wouldn't even come out of their house. While I was unloading my truck, they just stared at me through the blinds of their windows. Just looking at me, oh my God. <laughs> Honey, our property value just went down. <laughs> I don't know, he could be Mexican, he's wearing a Raiders jersey, I don't know. <laughs> oh, nope, he's got California license plates. Honey, he's black, yes he is. <laughs> But I'm, one of the reasons why I moved up there is because I'm a family man. I got kids. Got lots of, lots, lots of kids. <laughs> I do. I have, I have four kids of my own, but my oldest and uh, his wife, they just had their second baby. I became a grandpa twice over, which is fantastic. I love both. <laughs> grandpa? Not yet? Were any grandpas in the house? Look, they all at home. Nope, past their bedtime. They... <laughs> Well, I am a grandfather, I'm a grandfather twice, and I'm gonna tell you something, being a grandpa is fantastic. Cause now it's no longer on me at all. Growing up, when you're raising, when you're raising kids, it's tough. It is, kids are like little cockroaches. They are, you look at me like, man, I just bought cereal yesterday, where did it go? Little cockroaches just eat up everything, all over the house, everything. I was like, wow, what's wrong with y'all? And it's frustrating as a parent to put it together to go, oh, okay, okay, calm down, calm down, breathe. <laughs> but what's very refreshing is when your cockroach gets its own little cockroach. 
and you can sit back and watch them go through it and just smile. When they come back, Dad, do you know how much underwear costs? Yes, I do. I like that, because my kids, and I still have two at the house, still have two more at the house. Uh, my second oldest is 19. He's, uh, he's looking at joining the Air Force here next month. So he's going off and serving like his dad and his dad before that and his dad before that. Uh, he's going off to do that. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm proud of him for doing that. Uh, but I still got two at the house. Two more. In fact, I can't get rid of them so bad. They sitting up there right now. <laughs> I had to. They said I couldn't leave him in the car or something like that. Like, they didn't have enough Cheez-Its. And I do, I have three boys, one girl. My girl, she just turned 14. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hope that wasn't home. Oh, Cause no, this little girl, I'm telling you something. My, my little girl has me wrapped around her finger. That is daddy's girl. And she does it because she has those big brown eyes. You know, the little ponytails. They look at you like the devil. You standing in the store and your little girl comes walking up, Dad, I need this. <laughs> what do you say to that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. Go ahead, put it in the cart. <laughs> no, I get it. It completes the outfit. Of course you got to get it. Get it. <laughs> As soon as my boys walk up, hey, Dad, I need this. You need to put that back. That's what you need to do. You need to get a job. I don't care if you're 10. <laughs> Looking at the kids nowadays, too, it's different, man. It's different. The things that they have now, things that make their life so easier, and yet they still complain. Does anybody else get this? Like, the, today's teenage kids complain about the smallest little things. Dad, I hate this iPod. Why do you hate the iPod? Because I can only hold 2,700 songs in this thing, Dad. It doesn't have enough memory. I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, do you know how long it would take me to put 100 songs on a tape? I'd be there for two weeks. He looked at me, he was like, what is a tape? I'm like, a tape is something you can rewind with a pencil. That's what a tape is. Don't know. He was like, man, he was like, for real? He was like, well, how did you even like get that on there? He was like, you must have had a lot of tapes, huh, Pop? I'm like, nope, I had one tape. It was an MC Hammer tape. Only tape I owned. He asked me, he said, Dad, you can't record over an original tape. I'm like, you want to bet? If you cover up them two holes on the top of that tape, you stuff it with Kleenex or put scotch tape on top of it, you can record over and over again. Look at some of the young kids. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think we read about that in school. <laughs> it was, our lives was a little bit harder. When we wanted to record our favorite song, you had to get that off the radio, didn't you? Yeah. That took you all day to get one song. First you had to call and request the song to even be played. My kids was like, oh, that ain't hard, Dad. You just pick up the phone, right? Dee, 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 dee. I said, no, I picked my phone up. Da, 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 da. Kids didn't understand that. They was like, Dad, you didn't have like a cordless? Cordless phone, dude, my cord, that, my phone had a 985 foot cord on that thing. <laughs> that way mama could answer the phone in the kitchen and still water the grass in the front yard. That's why I was like that. <laughs> but kids, now they complain about it like that. They come to it. Now I get that they got a lot of neat stuff. I like some of this stuff. Phones now connect to TVs. TVs connect to your cars. Your cars connect to your friends and neighbors' houses. Everything connects. <laughs> Makes it easier. We didn't have none of that connection stuff. Like my kids will stare at a garage like it's supposed to raise. Like it's supposed to go up. Dad, what's wrong with the door? What you mean was when, when I grew up, we had big wooden garage doors that weighed 978 pounds. And if it rained, it weighed more than that. And you had to hold this thing up so that your dad could get the gremlin in the garage. Kids got it easy now, they do. My kids had to do it. They said, Dad, what about your computer at your house? When you grew up, what was your computer? Like, my computer at my house? The only time I seen a computer as a kid was at one day computer lab when we would play Oregon Trail. That was the only time. <laughs> no, don't even clap for that, girl. Don't clap for that. I hate that game. 
My whole family died in that game. That game was not good to me. We lost the wagon wheel and that was it. But it's true, I was trying to explain to my kids. My kids are teenagers, you know, they got all this stuff. You know, some of the things that I look at, when I look at what they have now, I don't look at what we're giving up. Has anybody been paying attention to what we're losing when all this new stuff is coming out? There's things that we used to do for years. There's things that we used to say for years, but because of the new technology, we don't say them or do them anymore. For example, because of cell phones, you will never hear somebody in the house ever again say it. Hang it up, I got it! <laughs> That's gone, it's obsolete now. The other day, I'm with my kid. He's sitting in the car, we drive over to the gas station, I run in to go get me some Gatorade. I'm 25 cents short at the counter, but I know I keep changing my ashtray. So I come back out to the door, I don't go all the way to my car, that's why I have kids, so they can bring it halfway back to me. But I'm standing in front of the store and I'm trying to get my kids attention. He's sitting in the car, he's listening to the radio. I'm like, Josh, 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 Josh! Hey, I need a quarter in, a, in the ashtray. I need, roll the, win roll the window, put the window down, put, roll through, roll through. He had no idea what that meant. None. My son has been on this planet for 12 years and has no idea what this is the symbol for. Now, I'm not gonna make fun of because I bet you there's at least four or five of you in here right now who still rolls their window down like this. And I know that, and I know that for a fact because the last show when they let out and we came, we were walking outside, one of them passed me in their car and was like, Great show, man. But he had no idea. He looked at me like I told him a riddle. When I left, I'm like, when somebody cut you off on the road and then had to stop at the red light so you could go right next to them, give them a little piece of your mind, let them know you didn't like that last transaction. But you can pull up next to them, hey, hey, throw your window down. <laughs> you feel like you almost won that conversation already. Now you can't do that. Now you pull up, you're like, hey, hey. Don't ever pull up next to me doing that. <laughs> what is he, a rabbit? <laughs> it's the truth, man, it is. Things are changing, we ain't even getting a vote on this. They're just changing it for us. <laughs> Taking it away from us. A lot of things are doing that. Nah, I'm still with them though. Like, I watch, I, watch, I watch how when they grow up, I watch some of the stuff that they get to do, some of the things they get to have, which I wish I had. I was like, man, it would have made life so much easier if we would have had all this type of gadgets and stuff. But we got to watch everything. You got to watch everything. If you're, a, if you're a parent, you got to watch what they got. You got to watch what they play with. You got to watch what they watch on TV. You got to watch what they listen to on the radio. You got to watch what they eat. Well, nobody looking out for me. <laughs> oh, that was real funny, huh? <laughs> looking all Mr. P90X. <laughs> All fit, you're happy, huh? Yes, he's cute. I know, look at him, he's perfect, look at him, look. Nothing, never went through a fat phase in your life, have you? <laughs> Ever. I mean, I was able to lose, I was able to go from 343 pounds down to 274. I'm still trying to get down to about 250, 249. It's hard, because I love food. I love food, I found out why I was so big. I did, because I have no allergies to nothing. <laughs> that was my problem. You know how you always ask your friend, oh, I'm allergic to dairy. Oh, you can't eat that, so that helped you out. 
Me, I was not allergic to nothing. They come up, Sean, can you eat shellfish? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All of it. <laughs> Sean, can you eat peanut butter? Put it on a shellfish. Let's go. <laughs> I am, I'm a professional eater. I love food. I am a food connoisseur. That's the word. I don't like when people call people fat, because you know what? Not all food connoisseurs are big. I know there's some skinny people out here that can eat. How many people in here skinny but can just eat a ton? Yeah, look at all y'all that I hate. Especially you. You get you, man, what do you weigh? Man, you just, you just, you eat, just eat, just eat, just nothing, huh? You go home, oh, I had like eight cheeseburgers. I ate like seven bowls of ice cream. I'm good. Still weigh 110. I stare at a Cheeto, I gain three pounds every single time. I'm envious of you, man. It must be nice to just eat whatever you want to eat, not gain nothing. I'm an eater. I love food. I love the. How many folks in here love food? Like, love to put down a good plate? Nice, nice, nice. Look, the whole table, y'all just sat there. All of y'all just sat there. I don't know if I'm going to tell everybody I eat. You know what? You guys probably look like you're a little confused on whether or not you love to eat. You got that look in your face like, I don't know, maybe, maybe. I'll tell you what, I came up with a test. Now, everybody can take this test home, try it on yourself, try it out on your friends. It's four simple questions. If you say yes to any of these four questions, you love to eat, stop lying to yourself. <laughs> Number one, if you finish off french fries from any fast food place that you like to go to by taking the whole cup and turning it upside down and tapping on the bottom so you can get that fry that's hanging on in the corner, let it go. <laughs> that fry ain't even worked it. It's a broken little piece of corner that if it sticks you in the mouth, it pokes you in the gums. <laughs> Let it go. Number two, if you finish off potato chips by putting the crease in the bag so you can pour the rest of the chips in your mouth. Don't lie. I look around. The worst is if you gotta lick your finger and stick it in the bag and try to get all that dust that was hiding. Some of y'all will go even further and take the whole bag, turn it inside out. <laughs> but watch some of the things. Number three, if you put something in your mouth that is burning your mouth, but you refuse to spit it out, <laughs> you actually learn how to chew and breathe at the same time. You're the only one at the table. <laughs> Nobody's gonna take that from you. <laughs> and the last, last, number four. This might not apply to you, 110. <laughs> but I know this applies to me. If you are laying in the bathtub, <laughs> let me finish. <laughs> it's like you already knew where I was going. <laughs> He was, oh man, he went there. <laughs> if you are laying in the bathtub and the water is up to your shoulders, but the minute you stand up, it's only ankle deep, you love to eat. <laughs> Don't lie. This happens to me all the time. I always stand up like, how did I take a bath in a cup of water? How did I do that? <laughs> You ever think it's the bathtub's fault, so you sit back down, you watch it come back up? I don't even like this tub. <laughs> but it's true, 110, I know, huh? You just float, right? <laughs> you don't even touch the sides of the bathtub. You're like, wow, no. Truth, I want to eat. I like eating. I like food. I like doing stuff like that. Now, I got to watch out on some of the things I do because there's some things that I got to fix now that I'm an, a grandpa and I got to act mature. <laughs> there's some things I got to go through. Like, there's something that, I always, that I've always done since a kid. I think everybody in my family suffers from it. I think it just runs in our blood. But we have a problem. We laugh at stuff we're not supposed to laugh at. <laughs> Anybody else? Really? Just bad, like you just see somebody walk into a pool door. You just, you just tell yourself, I wish I was on the other side of that door right now. 
Because that's what I say. I, I, so it's, it's funny to me only because it's, it's human beings that make me laugh. Humans make me laugh because people think, people, there's a lot of people that think that humans are the smartest animals on this planet. <laughs> they actually think that. We do stuff we can't even explain. Like ladies, let me ask you a question. Why is it every time you put on eye mascara, you got your mouth open? <laughs> Anybody? Watch, tomorrow morning you're gonna be in the bathroom. Ah. I even went to Macy's where the lady puts makeup on for you and she had her mouth open. I still didn't get it. But it's true, but every time I make fun of something when something happens to somebody, every time I make fun of it, something always comes back on me. How many of y'all believe in karma? Do you, really? Do y'all believe in that? Because it's real. It is. My karma always comes on back to me with some type of animal incident. Every time I make fun of somebody that happened to something else, something happens to me with an animal. I'll give you an example. I was on my friend's boat. We were out in the ocean. Sailboat. There is no other animals. We pull back to the dock. We're sitting at the dock on the very end of the dock. As we're sitting there, the boat's getting a little cold. I don't want to stay on the boat no more, so I decide I'm going to get off the boat, go up to the truck, watch Netflix, and turn on the heater. I get off the boat, feel a little better. I'm walking along the dock. Now, he parks his boat on the very end of the dock because he doesn't want to maneuver between other people's boats. So on this side, I can't see nothing. Black. That's all ocean. I'm walking this way. I hear the biggest splash <laughs> next to the dock. Not like a psh. It was like a <laughs> And I was like, what was that? So I decided to walk faster. As I'm walking faster, out of nowhere, from the night sky, the biggest pelican I have ever seen in my life. I don't even know what a I didn't even know what a pelican was till it showed up. He comes flying up, pow, right in front of the dock, wings out, boom, staring at me. I'm standing there like, whoa, whoa. What are you supposed to do? I thought he wanted to fight. That's what I, I, where I'm from, where I'm, where I'm raised at, if you walk up on somebody with your hands out like this, you want some. So when he landed, pow, and he went like this, I looked at Bird right in the face, what, you want some of this? Then I forgot, I don't know how to fight a, I don't know how to fight a bird. How do you fight a bird? You punch him in the beak, you pull his wet feet, what do you do? So the minute I squared up on this bird on the dock and I'm standing there like this, like, okay, we about to get this on. The biggest sea lion. Yeah, gets worse, girl. I watched your eyes get big. What? Yeah, yeah, karma. Karma. This is for me making fun of everybody. Now I'm stuck with this big sea lion that comes out of the water, lands behind the bird. Boom! Now I'm like, wow, he got backup. <laughs> got nobody. So I'm sitting there like this. Now, when he jumped on the dock, I noticed a shark fin right next to the, to the dock. So I was like, oh, that's why he had to get up here. He was being chased. That's what was happening. Now, when he got away from the shark, he wanted to tell somebody. There was nobody to tell except me. So he looked around. I looked around. You ever do that? Look around like, okay, what do you... <laughs> He looked me dead in my eyes, and the sound that came out of his mouth was the best Will Smith impersonation I've ever heard in my life. Because the minute he came out, boom, landed down, looked me in the eyes, and went, woo! <laughs> and I thought to myself, that makes sense. Because <laughs> if I would have jumped out right when the shark went by, I'd have been like, woo! So when he left, he jumped off the dock, bird flew away. I started walking down the dock and I was like, I need to get off of this planet, animal planet, kingdom dock. Cause I've been here 35 seconds and already seen three species. I'm done for the evening. But I'm walking and I'm thinking to myself, how am I supposed to tell this story to a group of people? Cause as comedians, if we want to tell you something that happened to us, we got to understand everything that happened in the story. There was one thing that was unclear to me. I know why the sea lion was there. He had to be there because the shark was chasing him. But the whole time I sat there, I was like, what the heck was the pelican doing on the dock? He had nothing to do with this. And then I figured it out. He was the crossing guard. He was, he was best friends with the sea lion. He was flying around. He seen that his buddy was being chased by a shark. He knew he had to get on the dock. 
But when he was flying, he said, wow, that dude is about to have a bad day. <laughs> so he came down to save me, flew down on the dock, pow, looked at me, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, man, stop, man, it's, it's not gonna, why are you trying to fight me, man, stop. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> Thank you. Karma. That's, that's the whole thing about it, too. Karma. So watch it. Watch it. If you got to do something with your kids, you got to do something like that, you got to teach them about that. I tell my kids that story all the time. I'm like, don't mess with animals. Leave them alone. Leave them alone, they leave you alone. Doesn't work for me. <laughs> but you gotta teach them that. You gotta watch them, you gotta teach them all that. It's up to the parents, man. I, I mean, I know a lot, when comedians talk about kids and you have a lot of comedians that come up and talk about kids, one of the main things that the comedians always say is kids gotta get whooped. Kids gotta get whooped. Kids don't get whooped enough. Kids don't get whooped like we used to get whooped. Honestly, I don't believe that. I don't. I think it's a lot of parents that need to get whooped. I'll say that out loud. <laughs> for real. If you don't believe me, if you don't agree with me, I'm probably talking to you. <laughs> Just saying, we are the reasons that our kids act the way they do. It's up to us. Our kids are a reflection of us. Whatever we do, we gotta, we gotta watch that. We gotta maintain that. And that's why I'm saying, like, if you watch your kids, you watch them grow up, you watch what they do, you gotta be in front of that. You gotta be in front of it all the time. We don't need to beat our kids, we just need to beat them to it. <laughs> that's it. If you have teenage kids, like, you don't have to beat your kids. You can do stuff to just get on their nerves. That's what I do. You can't beat a teenager. That's not gonna do nothing but make them mad. So you just gotta get on their nerves. You know what I do if my teenager makes me upset? I wait till he goes to sleep. Then I creep into his bedroom and I unplug his phone so he wakes up to a dead phone when he gets up. <laughs> yeah. You got that look on your, that would really make me mad. I know it does. <laughs> the minute they wake up, I thought I put it on there. I thought you did too. <laughs> Dad, you didn't unplug this? I don't know, did you take out the trash? <laughs> no, neither did I. <laughs> Just stay ahead of that, stay ahead of it. And I'm glad, yeah, and I'm, I'm glad my kids got to come down here with me. They don't really get to see me perform a lot, so I'm glad they got to come down here and be here with me tonight, because it was like, this, this was, it, I, I know that they have certain things that I'm jealous of, and I know that they have certain things that they do, but I love my kids. Like, you gotta love your babies. You have your babies, you gotta love your babies, you gotta be on top of that. Watch what they do, watch what they watch. Stay with them, do stuff with them. Don't end up with stuff. Don't, don't end up with your kid beating you up in the store. <laughs> I see that too much already. It's like that shouldn't be happening. That's going on the parents. We gotta act as parents, that's what we have to do. We gotta be the parents, they not the parents. They don't get to negotiate. My kids come in, dad, I have rights, do you? <laughs> but you got to, you gotta be on them like that. And I'll give you, I'll give you an example. <laughs> I'll give you an example. The, uh, before I leave, uh, I, I'm gonna tell y'all one of my favorite jokes. And this was told to me by an audience member at the end of a show. Every time we do a show, every time I've done a show, I've always had one person walk up to me and tell me a joke. It's gonna be somebody in here, I know it is. Cause this looks like that group's probably gonna be you. <laughs> it might be 110. 110, you've been contemplating with your hands folded. <laughs> But it might be one of y'all. And I had this gentleman come up and tell me a story about a father and a son and a mother, and it was, <laughs> it was so fun. I, I've heard a lot of jokes. I've heard a lot of them. But I had never heard this joke before, and when he told it to me, I actually spit my drink in his face. <laughs> he got to the punchline, I wasn't expecting it. Cherry Coke, <laughs> out my mouth, into his face. I apologize, I bought him a new shirt. <laughs> but when he told me the joke, I laughed. It was, it was the best. <laughs> I can't, I wanna laugh now. <laughs> Y'all want to hear the joke? Yeah. Okay, hold on, I gotta, I gotta maintain, hold on, get my bearing. You ever try to tell a joke, but you want to laugh too? <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Let me, wait. Okay, okay, we can do this, we can do this. <laughs> okay. Because if I laugh, it's not gonna all come out. Okay, shh. Okay, one tap, one shh, shh. Okay. <laughs> really, polka dots? All right. <laughs> all I see was polka dots on his shirt. That's all I can see. Okay, here's a joke. <laughs> Father comes home one day. 
Father's got a brand new robot. Puts it in the living room, says, calls his wife and, honey, come look at my new robot. Wife walks in, she says, honey, what, what, what is this? He goes, this is my special robot. This robot knows when somebody is lying. If somebody is lying, the robot slaps him in the face. So she's like, okay. He's like, we're going to try this out on our son. He's about to walk through the door. So they put the robot right by the door. Son walks in, sees the robot, says, dad, what's up with this robot? He said, don't mind what this robot's about. Just answer my questions. Number one, where were you? He said, I was, was at my friend's house. Robot didn't move. He said, what were you doing at your friend's house? He said, we was, uh, you know, doing homework. <laughs> Boom. Kid jumped back. He said, what was that? He said, every time you lie, this robot will need the nose, and he will slap you in the face for it. So I know you wasn't doing homework. What was you doing? He said, OK, we was, we was watching a movie. Robot didn't move. He said, well, what kind of movie was you watching? He said, we was watching Ghostbusters. <laughs> Boom. Kid jumped back, said, OK, OK, Dad, you know what? I'm tired of being hit. I don't want to lie no more. Okay, we was watching an adult film. Sorry. Dad looked him in the face. Dad said, you know what? I'm disappointed in you, son. When I was your age, I never watched adult films. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> but that's when the wife was like, see, he is your son. <laughs> drink out. <laughs> hey, Provo, you guys have been fantastic. <laughs> Mahalo. Thanks for coming out.